Welcome to the channel. In this video, we will be looking at the standard Veritas number four and comparing it to the custom number four to see what they upgraded. Stick with me. So here they are side by side. We have the custom and the standard. Now, I call it the standard, but I don't know if that's the official term, but until I hear otherwise, that's what I'm gonna be calling it. The custom comes in at four pounds, five ounces. The standard comes in at four pounds, 12 ounces. And I'm guessing a lot of that has to do with this entire frog mechanism in here. Lengthwise, now I'm only measuring the parts of these planes that touch the wood. Because if you look here, this part doesn't touch. And then if you look here, this part doesn't touch. So I'm only measuring really what matters, okay? They both come in at nine and a half inches long. Width-wise, the custom is just a little bit, it's about an eighth of an inch wider than the standard. It comes in at two and nine sixteenths. The standard comes in just under two and a half inches. So let me see if I can lift them up and show you. So that right there, just slightly, okay? Now, when I was looking at getting a custom, because full, full transparency here, I'm gonna back up a little bit. I tried the Veritas standard, it took good shaving, so it didn't have anything to do with that. I just, I don't know what it was about it. Um, it worked great. It could take like buttery smooth shavings, but I wasn't a huge fan of it. So I switched all of my users to Lee Nielsen's and then I got my hands on a custom and now I sold all of my Lee Nielsen's and I'm going Veritas custom for all of my bench planes because it is phenomenal. I do have a whole video that talks about just this plane, shows it in use, you know, that kind of stuff. But this video, I wanna focus on what did they upgrade? Because when you look at Veritas, the custom is more expensive than the standard. And I wanted to know why, like what's, what improved? I mean, obviously you can see a lot. There's a lot of differences already, but there's nothing out there that I've seen that shows you what they are, tells you what they are. So let's start taking these apart and looking at all of the parts and seeing what changed. So already we see a smaller cap, still a screw cap. I do like that they went with a solid silver. I think that looks pretty neat. Don't forget to like and subscribe. One big difference here. See how that has a plate? This one doesn't. It's just the old school pointed ones. I like that this has more contact. I feel like it gives it more support than just this little nib does. The irons, we see another big change. So this is an older style. This, the standard bench plane that I have is old. So it has the old school style chip breaker. Just know that the newer ones are flat. They don't have this bump there anymore. Iron size is, is significantly different. It's a lot smaller. And I like that because I never understood, why do you need all this? I understand because you have the bigger frog, but that's a waste of metal. That's a waste of money right there that you're paying for. Because really, this is the only part you're going to use because you're cutting, but they it's always this big thing and it's always this gigantic chip breaker. So I like that they made it smaller because that's really all you need. All you need is this cutting surface right here and we can look at that. Look at that. About the same, I'd say maybe this is a 16th of an inch longer, maybe. But this was used, so I don't know how many times it was sharpened too, but anyways. So there's those two things. The main thing that I wanna point out with this. So this one has a really cool feature where when you take this chip breaker off to sharpen, you can put it back exactly where it was. That's what this circle is back here. Cause right now, when you look at almost all of the bench planes out there, it's this kind of style. Where you have to take this off, loosen that, go sharpen, and then you have to put it back and try to get it exactly where it was again, which means you're putting this back, flipping it over, figuring out where you had it, and then tightening it down, okay? The custom eliminates that issue, because all you do is you take, they provide this little Allen key, take the Allen key, loosen the screw, I tend to try to keep it on there because that screw is really small, so don't lose that. And then this comes off. Then you can take your iron and sharpen it. This stays there because see that that screw is pinching this circle onto the iron. 
So you can take it, sharpen your bevel, flatten the back. It does fit in the MK2. It was really close to here, but I was able to get it to work. So you don't really need to move this once you have it set. Especially if you freehand, you never need to move it. So that to me is a huge bonus, this piece. Because then boom, you're done sharpening. This goes back on there. Hold it square on the sides. Put your screw back in. Tighten it down. Now, I've heard a couple people say that they stripped this out. You don't need to crank down on it. You really don't. I mean, just, just snug it up and then, and then you're good. So, huge bonus there. Now, the next big change you're going to see is the frogs. Okay? This is the standard style. This is the custom. So it is a really small frog. Let me take the frogs off and then you can really see the differences. So first, here's the beds. So when I first looked at this, I was nervous because, sorry for the sawdust. I was nervous because it doesn't look like it has a lot of support. But for the size of this frog, it doesn't need it. It has adequate support for what it needs. Okay, but there's the bed. Here's the bed on this one. Which, this doesn't really need support because if you look at this, this is like a beast. Okay. Then here are the frogs. This is a drastic change and I love it. Because you don't need a frog this big. If you, if you get a frog that big, that's when you have to get into a bigger iron. I feel like you have more of a chance of chatter, more of a chance of backlash. Like, I feel like it just... But if you look, all the planes have it. All that Bailey has it. Lee Nielsen has it. Clifton has it. I mean, all of them have this gigantic frog. Veritas, change that. Because this is really all you need. So that's what their frog looks like. It's also easier to install and uninstall, if you couldn't tell. So it's just these two screws and then it lifts up. With the standard style, this hole right there fits on top of that, like this. And then you have a brass screw that goes in the back here. And then you also have a screw that goes in here. So it's a lot more work to assemble this. Versus just two screws. And again, this is really all you need. Now, when you look at that iron, bring that back. There's a hole in the piece that like is the, I call it the auto set for the chip breaker. That rests right onto here. So when you put the iron on here, boom, it goes right there. Okay. The other thing I like about that is it pretty much keeps your depth set that's one of the reasons that I like the Norris style adjuster because when you take the iron out and put it back in, this stays where you left it. When you go to the other planes, they have that yoke and it likes to change on that yoke. So this, it stays the same because it loops right into that. Even on the standard style, it loops right into that. Now when it comes to the adjusters, I'm not... So for the customs, they sell a slow style. They also sell them for the bevel up planes and the block planes and that kind of stuff. A slow Norris style adjuster, which is what I want to get on all of mine because I tend to adjust this like a gorilla. I have a short video that talks about that. I'm not sure if they have it for the standards. I feel like they're phasing these ones out to go with the custom and I'm 100% on board with that because these custom planes are amazing. So I'm not getting it, let's keep looking at it. So here's the frog mechanism for the standard. So it's this big piece, which I still really like. I think that's cool that it's like really unique. Like technically, can I just put the iron on here and make it a chisel plane? I've never tried it. Maybe you will. Here's the frog for the custom. Now, one thing I will note. This one, you don't have to square the frog. Because the way that it sits on here, it has very, see that? Very little movement when you set this one on there. Now, when the screws go into it, it's a little bit different. It's going to look like it has a lot of motion right now. But when you have the screws in there slightly, it doesn't move this much. But you still have to square this frog more than you would the standard. Um, I wish that's one thing that they would have 
machined a little bit better, like put lines in here to keep it square or something like that. But when you tighten the screws down, it's really close. But I like my frogs to be perfectly square. So what I found to do is I loosen this. That moves the mouth back. So what I do is I put the mouth right there, push my frog up against it, and then put the screws in. And then, boom, you've got it square. I don't know if they intended it to be that way, but I'm using it that way, and I love it. <laughs> For the note on the mouth, so the custom has, as you saw, this mouth that moves underneath here. Okay, and it has a wide range. I mean, look at that. It goes all the way and all the way, okay? It also has the stop, like their bevel up planes do, that prevent this from smacking into, so see where I have it? It prevents the mouth, it's a stop. So it doesn't smack into your iron. The mouth for the Veritas standard is actually controlled by this piece right here. When you tighten this, it moves this forward, which closes the mouth, so I'll show you that. Watch the opening. There you go. That's from twisting this right here. Now, what I learned with the standard planes, I couldn't get the mouth as tight as I wanted to. On the custom, you can. On the custom, you can get the mouth as tight as you want, and you'll still be able to take... I mean, obviously, don't close it. Be rational, okay? Don't start yelling at me in the comments. But when it came to the standard, I learned that I needed the mouth to be a little bit more open than... I guess what people would traditionally do. So if you have a standard and you're having issues with it, try opening the mouth, okay? Oops. All right, so that's the mouth. The knobs, they really didn't change that much. As you can see there, they're, they're pretty similar. The totes, excuse me, still on the knobs. For the customs, you can order different knobs. They have a tall, skinny knob, a low, flat knob, and then this one. I like this one because it's the happy medium. You can hold it like this if you want to, or you can push down if you want to. But one of the reasons I love this plane is it's customized to you. And that's one of the things is the knob. You can pick the style of the knob. You can also pick the style of the tote. So this is the more traditional style where it's got more of that forward lean, more of a curve, curve versus the modern style which is more straight up less of a curb um these handles are pretty big so i have like medium sized hands when i buy gloves they're mediums so that right there that's a pretty big tote for my hand but the custom you can customize it i don't know which one this is because i bought this one used but let me look at the number five this is the medium i think they're the same yeah yeah, so this is the medium traditional style tote. So you can customize that to what you want. They have small, medium, and large in traditional, and then they have small, medium, large in the modern style. So those two right there, because when you think about it, this is all about comfort. How you're able to hold this plane, the knob, the tote, that's all about comfort, and you can pick. And that's amazing. I guarantee you, you're going to start seeing other companies start doing this because it's a genius idea and I love that they came up with it. The other thing that you can customize is the frog. So this is the 45 degree frog. You can also get a 55 degree frog and a 50 degree frog, excuse me, a 40. So actually you can order whatever size between, I think it's 40 and 65. I went with a 55 for difficult grain, a 45 for standard. I don't know if I'm going to get a 40 because I have a low angle jack plane and a jack rabbit plane video on that upcoming. So that's the other thing that you can customize with this, where when you get to the standard, that's not something you can customize. The frog is the frog. It's 45 degrees and that's what you get. I mean, that's normal, but it's an added bonus that you can pick. So let's just look at the bodies because the styles have changed also. So here is the custom. All right, when it comes to the bodies too, they also have a couple different differences other than style. So they both still have set screws. It looks like, I didn't check this before. Oh, I like that. Okay, so the set screws on the custom are bigger. I mean, you can even tell by looking at the outside here. The set screws on the custom are bigger, which I like. 
Now, some people have told me that they can set these set screws and never have to change a lateral. That doesn't make sense to me, and I haven't figured out how to get any of the Veritas planes to do that because when they pinch that low, they're maximizing the lateral adjustment. So I don't know if they're pinching their iron in there and then like it's cranked down so tight it can't move, but then you can't take it out to sharpen it. I don't know. So if you've figured out how to do that, feel free to let us know down below. The other thing you're gonna notice on the custom is it has these two holes on both sides. So what the heck are those for? I initially thought they were more set screws. Then I said, no, they're not. Then I went up here and I saw these bumps and I was like, well, maybe the black part comes out. Nah, Jamie, you're dumb, okay? <laughs> what it is, is a fence. You can take a fence and screw it onto this plane, which is awesome. If you struggle at squaring an edge, or say you want to put a chamfer, you can put an angle on this and use your number four to make a chamfer. So with just the addition of the fence, it has changed this plane to be a lot more universal than it's just a number four. So not only can you pick your tote and your knob and your frog, you can also put a fence on it to use it to make chamfers. You can use it to make raised panels, um, square and edge. I mean, it's, it's phenomenal. So here's the fence. These are cool too. You loosen these, slide these, tighten them down. A lot better than thumb screws, so I love these. These fences also fit on, from what I saw, all of the custom planes. And then they also fit on the Bevel Up Jack plane, which is where this one actually came from. Excuse me, the Bevel Up Jack Rabbit plane. The last thing that I want to mention about the custom, actually both of them, is the weight distribution. So, when you are using this plane, all of the weight is like right here, right in the middle, which is amazing for me because I tend to dip out boards or, or scoot them this way. Ooh. But because it's in the middle, I feel like it counteracts that a little bit. And it's just, it's just a dream to use. Again, I have an entire video that just focuses on this plane, but that is definitely a huge improvement that they pretty much focused all of the weight into the middle, which is what you want. You don't want it to be too heavy on the outside. You want it to be heavy in the middle because that's where all the cutting action is happening. So that's where you want all the strength to be. So that right there is a huge improvement in my opinion also. This plane, okay. This plane is really back heavy because of how this sits and where this, how the angle and everything, it feels like it's real heavy in the back. I'm gonna try not to get too excited because I've recorded this out here a few times. So let me start by saying, the reason I like Veritas is because they're actually thinking about you. They are thinking about the end user and who is going to be using this plane. And they're coming up with innovative ways to make it easier for us. When you look at all of the other companies, they just copy old styles and improve the metal type and improve the machining because we have better metals now and because we have better machining now. But Veritas is thinking about you and saying, you know what? Not everybody's hand size is the same. So let's make different tote sizes. They offer six. Not everybody likes the low knob. Let's offer different types. They offer three. Not everybody wants a 45 frog. So they offer, I mean, they, they customize it to you. They think about you. I know that Lee Nielsen offers different frog angles, but their frogs are super expensive. Veritas, I think they're like 60 bucks. I love that they made the iron smaller because there's no reason. You don't need that big of an iron. You're not going to use that. That's all waste. They made the frog smaller, which I like too. This is the only plane that I've ever used that didn't have any backlash and any chatter. When you set it up right, you have to make sure that things are advanced, but I didn't have any backlash or any chatter with this plane in that. That's amazing. The weight distribution is still one of my favorite things that I can't explain it until you try it. All of the other planes I've used have either been forward heavy or back heavy, and this is right in the center. And it is a game changer. The whole plane is a game changer. I love that you can put a fence on it. That's a huge feature because I know Stanley has the one that clamps on the side, Miller's Falls, and it clamps on the side and it kind of hangs over a little bit, but this is a sliding fence. So that, that right there is amazing. I'm super excited about that and I am gonna use it a lot. Um, they really just, they revolutionized the game. They did, and I really hope that more companies start doing this because that's exactly what we need. We need that. We don't need more copies. We don't need more clones. We need somebody to think about the tools that we're using. And if you watch a lot of my review videos, that's Veritas. 
I'm not sponsored by them. I wish I would because I love their planes and I'm very passionate about them. If you can't tell, but I'm not sponsored by them. Um, I just really, really enjoy this plane and I like it a lot. And the improvements they made are, again, revolutionary, innovative, game changing. All right, I will stop. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, any comments, anything like that, feel free to let us know down below. If you have this plane and like it, let us know. If you have this plane and don't like it, I don't want to hear that it's because of that little screw on the chip breaker because it's probably you tightening it down too far because that's the biggest complaint I've heard. The other one that I've heard is they don't like the look of it. I'd rather it function, but I actually kind of like how it looks with the little shark fin on it. But anyways, all right, I hope you guys enjoyed and have a good one.